So this morning, I'm here with Richard Conway from Pure SEO, and Pure SEO is New Zealand's largest and most awarded um, search engine optimization company. Is that correct? It is. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on board today. Appreciate that. Cool. Thanks for having me. So Richard, um, you and I have known each other a long time. You actually Mm. were quite instrumental in um, helping me with my business many years ago. I don't know if you remember, but you took me out for lunch one day, and um, we talked about some ideas around business, and and that really kick-started my career. So um, thank you for that. Really appreciate it. We'd like to tell me a little bit about, you know, your journey to becoming um, the business person you are today and maybe start with just giving our listeners a bit of a sense of a, a professional or personal best that you hold dear to yourself. Cool. Um, yeah, it's not been an easy journey. Um, came to New Zealand in 2009 from the UK and my wife's also British. Yep. Came in travelling in our early 20s, fell in love with the place and thought we're better to bring up kids. So came to New Zealand, thought walk into a job, no one's give me a job, no Kiwi experience. Um, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. So really the early days were really, really, really hard. You know, didn't know anyone in New Zealand, didn't know anything about anything, um, wanted to start a business, had a few different ideas. Um, and so, yeah, the, the early days were just sort of pretty hard. And then like the personal best is I look, I look back I, I sit down, I go to our office and you know, there's all these people that rely on me for their income and we've got a big building and we've got all this cool stuff happening and lots of clients and I never would have believed it at the beginning. And, you know, it's those incremental, the constant momentum, constantly doing something every day to push towards things that creates those big things. You can't necessarily see that in the early days and it's quite inspiring to look back and see wow, this idea turned into this thing that, you know, pays 70 odd people their wages and stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Mm. So where, where did the idea come from? So I ran a company for someone else in the UK and we spent lots of money on digital marketing. Um, I had a few ideas when I came to New Zealand of different businesses, got background in commercial property. So there was something around property. There was a few other things. I'd found a business partner for the commercial property thing um, they pulled out at the last minute and I thought, I really don't need anyone else. Let's just do something myself. Um, and so I settled on the SEO side of things and then me and the wife sort of threw a few names, um, together and came up with pure SEO. Um, a friend called John Malloyd, who I met created the logo for a bottle of Grey Goose vodka <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and just, yeah, just put, um, a stake in the ground and it could have been other things. It would just it happened that that was the one I chose. Yep. And so, you know, 2009, there was just probably yourself and your wife and a, was it just the two of you when you first started or did you have? Just me. Just yeah. you. My wife was a social worker. Okay. Um, so it was just me and yeah, didn't know anyone. It was, and I'm, I'm not the most extroverted person, um, although I pretend to be. Yep. Um, and so it was going out, meeting people and doing stuff that was really uncomfortable um, but it becomes more comfortable over time. Yeah. And now you've got 70 odd staff. Mm. That really is fantastic. So tell us a little bit about that journey because, you know, we often see people say, Hey, look, you know, look at Richard. He's so successful. He doesn't know what it's like um, to, to be where we are but on that journey. What have been the sort of challenges along the way for you? So loads of challenges So in, in the early days, I didn't really know anyone or anything. It's just, you know, the first year, I think I generated sixty thousand um, dollars in total in the first year, and there were lots of things I didn't know, like I didn't know about entertainment being fifty percent tax. <laughs> like loads of things you just don't know if yeah. you've not been in business, especially in New Zealand. And so um, it was really hard, um, really, really, really hard. I had to do everything myself. I had to fi- do the meetings, find the clients, do the work present the work, create the templates, create the business, just everything. And I'm not a detailed person, (laughs) but, you know, in those early days, when you get the customers, you just over-service them because you just really want to, they put their trust in you and you want them to be a success. You'd almost give them a massage on the way out. It's it's that important to you that you service them. And um, the idea was always to scale. I'm not, someone who wanted to sit on the tools. Yep. Um, and so the initial plan, um, 50 customers, 120 grand a year, 60 grand to keep myself and 60 grand to pay someone to do the work and rinse and repeat. Model changed, but loads of difficult times. And it's been documented before. We had three miscarriages in the first year of business. Yeah. My wife got cancer. 
in 2012, you know, with no family here, you know, the emotional, my, my key staff member also in 2012, handed in his notice to go to a competitor just the same week that uh, my wife got the cancer diagnosis. And you know, there's been so many times where I've just wanted to give it in and not get out of bed, not face the world. And I often think the difference between success and failure is when you really don't want to get up, you don't want to face the world, you just you know, sort of slap yourself in the face and say, look, go do it. People are relying on you, just get up, do it, and you'll work away. And um, one thing I've learned over the years is bad stuff happens, right? You yep. know, it's it's going to happen. And it could be 20 amazing things happen, and then one bad thing happens, and then that, your mind just focuses on that bad thing. <laughs> And you've got to consciously flip it around and say, hold on, you know, I've had these 20 good things happen and these one bad things. And, you know, as a percentage, you Not take that bad. all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. And so it, a lot of it's changing mindset and understanding that you know, stuff is going to go wrong. Uh, bad stuff's going to happen. It's going to be emotional. I've had business partners screw me over. I've had business partner in Australia uh, passed away in a freak accident, you know, he's a couple of years older than me, he leaves a wife and two young kids. And yeah. there are all these unforeseen things that happen and they can beat you. Um, but I believe you've got to kind of push through and not let them beat you because there's so many times where it would just be easier to go off and get a corporate job. Or We talked about that a moment ago, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so do you have any sort of um, pointers around how you do that? Because, you know, when I call it the, the the death spiral. It's like if you keep focusing on the negatives, you eventually just get further and further and further down and it can almost feel like you cannot get out of it. What have you done personally if you have felt yourself heading down that? What do you do to bring yourself out? So I met this amazing woman a number of years ago in the UK called um, Deborah Sell. And what she did is um, she, with her husband who was an oarsman, they went on this um, boat trip where, which is from the UK to the Caribbean, right? It's a tiny boat, two people in, husband, uh, proper oarsman. Anyway, they get um, 20 Ks out or something and a husband realizes he's got massive fear of open water. <laughs> Um, so he oh gets God. picked up <laughs> yeah. and she's got to decide whether she goes it alone. And no one's ever done this by themselves, let alone this little woman who's not a professional rower or anything. Yeah. And she decides she's going to do it. Um, and it took her many months and she did it. And she put together this toolbox of things which um, helped her get through it. And those are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, so one one is playing the movie in your mind. So seeing the outcome that you want to do and replaying that and replaying that in your mind to visualize where you want to be. And that helped. Another was um, putting um, music to... Um, you know, music makes you feel a certain way. So having playlists that bring you into a certain frame of mind. Oh, nice. So I, I have I have, I've put together these playlists. You know, if I'm feeling down, I, I have playlists that will bring me up. If I'm going to a massive pitch, I have playlists that sort of pump, you rev, up. pump me up and yeah. things. And making conscious decisions to change your mindset. I, I actually um, can choose to become obsessed with things. Like, you know, I've decided I really want to do this and it's really important to me. So... Um, by complete by repeating that cycle in my mind and doing these actions, you create positive habits. Yep. Um, but look this girl, this lady up, um, Deborah Searle. Deborah Searle, yeah, I've yeah, got a moment of that, yeah. And I think she gives it away, um, this free toolkit of different things that can help change your mindset. Um, amazing woman, incredible. So Fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, you, you went from being on your own to having a number of staff. As you said, you lost a couple of key people along the way. What's been the biggest thing you've learned about people in the business? So there's there's two sides. One, you get amazing people. They'll, they'll just, you empower them. They'll just do stuff that you wouldn't even dream of. So it's finding those people who have the skill sets that you don't. Mm -hmm. So you create a team of different passions and skill sets and they're just, it creates a whole shit. The other side is um, I've overpromoted people, which has been detrimental to business, and I've not got rid of people quick enough, which has been detrimental to business. And I think as a leader, you've got to be decisive and you've got to make those decisions quickly, and that's not necessarily natural to me. Yep. But if you don't, it just you're going to have to do it at some point, so you might as well just do it, and that's been a, a big learning for me. Yep. 
And I, I suppose, what's your role in the business now? I should ask. What do you do in the business? What's your role now? So I'm the CEO. I have yep. a general manager. I have an ops manager. I've got financial controller. So day to day, I'm not really involved. Excellent. I do the strategic stuff, come up with the crazy ideas, the PR, the speaking, and yep. all, the, all that kind of stuff that um, Rain makes for the business. Yep. Um, and we're at a stage where we're going um, really fast with growth mm. again um, after the sort of lull of COVID. And I think my next potential piece of that jigsaw is potentially a, a marketing manager. I've never had a marketing manager. Uh-huh. I've always kind of done um, stuff myself. Yep. Um, but I think we're getting to a size where having someone purely focused on marketing might be a good idea. Um, that's my kind of next um, iteration of yeah. that the accountability chart. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So now being in that role of CEO where you do get the chance to just, you know, pursue the big ideas, the big relationships, all that stuff, how has that changed your life? So there was a period where I, I kind of fired myself as sort of day-to-day <laughs> a number of years ago. Yep. Um, there was a period where I'd overpromote someone. I was coming back into the business and I was doing all this stuff. I'd lost my mojo. I'd really wasn't enjoying things again. And I did a presentation to my EO forum about why I'd lost my mojo. And during that process, I wrote down down every single thing that I hate doing that I'm doing. I just decided it was my ego making me do that stuff. I just decided overnight, I'm just going to stop doing it and focus on the things that I enjoy and the things that really um, fit my skill set. And overnight, it transformed my enjoyment of my day-to-day. And when people come to me with stuff that, I didn't want to do it. I'd just say, look, you're capable. You make those decisions. I'm not going to come down on you if you make a mistake, um, but you're better at that stuff than me. And, and it just transformed everything. Um, the one thing I don't do now that I miss a little bit is I don't make any sales anymore. I, oh, love, okay. I love the sales thing. But, but you do big relationship sales, don't you? Sort of. I like, yeah, I've just, just agreed a channel partnership, which um, I can't talk about who with yet. But um, yeah, I, I bring in, I, I sort of rain make a little bit. But even with that, I'll bring in a salesperson to the meeting if I have to attend the first one, and then I'll hand it over to them. And the thought process behind that is, firstly, they're actually better salespeople than me anyway. But um, I don't want to disenfranchise my sales team, but the CEO going out and taking all the deals. I'd rather they earn the commission and they're empowered to do it because, um, you know, that's their job. I don't want to take away from them. I want to... um, I want to give them the best opportunities. And if I start making all the sales or the bigger sales, you know, I don't want to disenfranchise them. And yep. you know, I'd rather it cost me more money and I've got a happy functioning sales team. And like I say, they're, they're better at sales than me anyway. <laughs> sure. So, you know, EOS, we talk about like doing what you love with people you love. And we actually um, use a Dan Sullivan tool, which is about, you know, your unique ability. So working out what you really, really are put on this planet for and making sure you spend most of your time doing that. And we use a little tool called Delegate and Elevate, where you literally list the things that you love and you're great at or the things that you don't love and you're, you're not so great at. Is that what you did? Did you actually literally go through and sort of write down all the things that you do and then go, yes, that's me and no, that's not? Or what was the process you went through to yeah. decide? Yeah, pretty much. So I had to do a presentation to my forum. You do a presentation once a month. Yep. Because I was really feeling not not enjoying my day to day, and um, and so I, I literally wrote down all the things I do and two sides and just you know what I want to enjoy, what I enjoy, and what I don't enjoy. Yep. And I looked at it, and it was just staring me there in the face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was obvious once I'd done that, but you don't necessarily always see that without. You know, visualizing when you're in the weeds, you don't necessarily see it. And I say it's probably ego that brings you in. You know, I'm the fixer. You know, it's natural to want to fix stuff. Yep. Um, but you're not always best place to do that. And it's and it can be detrimental to the business. You start disenfranchising people because you're stepping on their toes. The business stops growing because you're not focusing on the big picture, mm-hmm. and um, and your passion goes because you're not doing the stuff you enjoy. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't have a formal process, but it was just, yeah, it just kind, of, kind of came out of that. And taking time out, we talked about this before, right? Having some time out to actually think about those things is really important. Do yep. you do that regularly now? Yeah, so I have a, a massage once a week. Yep. Um, and I kind of, I use that to really 
sort of think. I sort of just occupy my mind and just do that. I also do kickboxing two or three times a week. I've seen that on LinkedIn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably not very good. Like I'm in my <laughs> mid-40s, but um, it's, it's just good exercise. And uh, when I came to New Zealand in 2009, I used, to, I used to be pretty fit as a kid, and then I'd stopped exercising for ages, and um, I'd put on loads of weight. I wasn't fit anymore, and um, I, had, I wanted children. I thought, I don't want to be that parent who can't run around after their kids, and and so I, I decided to start exercising with a personal trainer who actually, she became a friend of mine. Um, and then I, I sort of moved on and, and found something I really enjoyed, which was um, kickboxing. And yeah, yeah. I said, I'm never, I'm never going to be amazing at it, yep. but um, it's enjoyable. Enjoy it. And yeah. I, I pay for anyone at Pure SEO who wants to come on a Monday night. So we have a whole bunch that come on a Monday, private class, uh, yep. get to punch the CEO. Which is, <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love it. Okay. Are there any, any other sort of defining moments in your career, things that you sort of suddenly, you know, either did or um, engage with somebody, anything that just suddenly really changed the way the business was moving? So several things. And they're, they're often from small conversations. So I had a conversation with a guy called Frank um, randomly at an event and he was talking about his business and how they sold it and how, how they had a lot of their IP and what he defined as a black box, but it was, it's just, you know, a piece of software that held their IP. And it got me thinking, like, our IP was basically what's called link building sheet and it was on an Excel spreadsheet. Anyone can nick it. And it, it got me thinking about how do we create something to hold our IP plus also allow us to scale and based on that conversation, we created some software and that allowed us to scale. So it was an enormous um, thought process. And another was a conversation I had with someone around the whole sales thing and why we were failing with our salespeople. And it, it turned out we had the wrong people on the ship and all our salespeople were failing for a period because we weren't giving them the right tools to succeed. Oh, yeah. And so I brought in someone else. I shoulder tapped um, people who were known as really good in our industry. And I've got someone in, um, we, we tried to tap three people, two of them wanted the job, one um, wanted to do his own thing. And I chose one um, and it was one of the best decisions I ever made, but it came from a, a conversation uh, with someone as well, tra transformative, because I'm not that detail, that process person and having someone in that role who basically set up systems and processes to allow our salespeople to succeed, yep. um, just transformed our business. Fantastic. So having sort of an operating system in place as opposed to just, yeah, just running by the city of your pants. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, the, the different processes and if salesperson's not succeeding, where are they falling down in the process and coaching them around, you know, what they need to get because, you know, everything is around process, objection handling and, I, I genuinely believe we're the best at what we do. And so yep. we rank number one for SEO. I've written a book for Penguin Random House. We get a lead. As far as I'm concerned, why would they go with anyone else? Yep. And so we've got all that. And so looking through the process, why would custom, why would a potential customer say no? And which salespeople are doing it right, which are not, and analysing that process. And when they're not succeeding, sitting down, looking at the element of the process, and just tweaking it so that they're communicating in the right manner. Because um, if someone's coming to us, they want our product or service. Yep. You know, as far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't go with anyone else. So <laughs> absolutely, um, yeah. <laughs> Now I know that you you know you are the most awarded agency, but you you've also been in the Fast Five Hundred and the Fast Fifty for a number of sort of running years. And what's been your most proud moment, I suppose, of the business in terms of success? So probably um, when I sold thirty five percent to I sold twenty five percent to Tony Falkenstein um, and ten percent to Ian Malcolm, my um, accountant. Accountant, that, yeah. That kind of gave me the validation that. Um, we're going in the right way and you know i've got a lot of respect for these people and the fact that they're willing to put their cold hard cash to buy a percentage you know that's that's pretty um defining yeah like you know that that was massive like the awards are really for a pr perspective like yes. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. for me that's a brand building uh, a growing thing you know, to, i don't really mean, mean much yeah, yeah no, fair enough but they're brilliant for the brand you yeah. know we've been i think to like past 500 for seven years in a row, the only company in New Zealand who have been seven years in a row. Uh, and 
that's brilliant for the brand. That's fantastic. Yeah. You yeah. Know, okay. But, but what does that it wasn't mean? really mean. Yeah. Increased revenue. You know, it doesn't mean <laughs> profitable. It doesn't mean anything else other than revenue increases. Yeah. Um, but it's also cool to celebrate that stuff with the team because it's them that does it, not me. Yeah. How do you celebrate with the team? What do you do? So sort of not for those big things, but also for the small things, because you like celebrating the, even the small successes, right? Yes, yeah, so, so last Friday we do an annual boat trip. So last Friday we had everyone on a boat trip. We hire it, we charter a boat, go out. Um, if, uh, people jump off into the water. We um, supply food and stuff. Every Christmas we have a Christmas party that, sits with our values so trust respect integrity and family so what we do is we do a barbecue i do all the cooking but people's partners are invited their kids their parents you know we do we get nice. presents for the kids someone's dressed as santa and it's a very family affair yeah we had about 90 people at our last um you know, christmas party and it's it's about giving back mm -hmm. and then we do lots of things like when we have rather than celebrate when people leave yeah like most people do we celebrate when people come so we have a a welcome coffee where everyone goes around and says something about them that other people might not know and welcome someone to the company. Now let's celebrate people coming on board and celebrate the company growth. So there's all sorts of things we do all the time. Every Christmas I make sure I handwrite cards to every single member of the team mm -hmm. and I find out what they've been doing in the year and I, I make sure I write um, specifically and let them know that they're, what they're doing is being Appreciated. seen. Yep. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff we do. And um, I think the big thing is genuinely caring. Yeah. Right? If you genuinely care, people feel that. Um, and I'm not the best communicator. And so um, I, I try and communicate as best I can and show that you know, I know it's not all about me yep. you know it's, it's it's more about them than me mm -hmm. and the success is around them you know i just take all the plaudits because i'm seen as front and center but you know i couldn't do it without the team. people yeah. yeah and i know you're really strong on your values and, and again you shared with me a job advert that you use that really helps people make decisions before they even get to the interview about whether or not they're the right values fit how do you test that when they because you know people can come to an interview and they can say all the right things do you have a, a method of seeing if they really truly fit the values so um I intrinsically see the best in people. Yes. So I want to hire everybody. So <laughs> I've actually been kicked out of the interview process. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> um, I might meet someone just before, you know, just to give a final tick. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And we use the GM and the team lead and um, they have processes and, and stuff, but we do. Um, that is part of our employment process. They've got to fit our values. If they yep. don't fit our values, even if they're incredibly technically skilled, sound, yeah. Then they're just not for us. Yeah. It's I think you can teach skills, you can't teach values. Yeah, and you can't teach attitude. That's yeah. cool. Okay, I'm conscious of time. Um, we, we always like to share these sort of three tips people can take away. We've already talked about Deborah Searle and her, um, you know, how you can change your mindset to to get out of bed each morning. What are the other couple of things you'd like to share with the, the listeners about what you would either what, what you have done or things that have really helped in your business? So one thing is, like, you look at all these business owners who have built big companies that are successes. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. It's about continual momentum, always trying different things. Um, you know, something doesn't work, try something else. But it's every single day you do small steps towards a bigger goal and big things will happen. And you'll look back and you think, how, how did I get here? And it's just those small um, steps. Yeah. And the, the, the final one is um, don't be scared to invest. Like, so my first website, I spent 10,000, or my second website, my first one I cobbled together, but the second one I spent $10,000 um, to build massive amount of money for me at the time. First inquiry was Singapore Airlines. Yeah, it sh showed me the value of, um, of spending money. Then I... Um, I got the opportunity to spend a week with Branson in Necker Island. That's right. Yeah. It cost me twenty thousand um, dollars. Again, massive amount of, of money, um, but it paid for itself many times over. Uh, recently, wrote a book for Penguin Random House. You know that took money and time to get that done. Again, paid for itself many times over. And any time I've taken these big leaps uh, with investment, with time, they paid for themselves. And you know, it's, it's sometimes scary to commit money that you don't necessarily have and you and you've got to be you, know, you can't put yourself in big trouble mm -hmm. but i think it's good to take some of those risks sometimes and do the things 
that other people aren't doing. Like everyone's doing eBooks and yeah. stuff. So let's do a physical book. Let's yes. get Penguin Random House to publish it. You know, do things that other people aren't doing. Be different. I hate following the crowd. It's just, it's counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. You know, have branded cars on the road. Just do stuff, measure it, and iterate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Now, you are, without a doubt, one of the best SEO um, companies in New Zealand, if not around the world. How do people get in contact with you if they'd like to talk to either you or the team about using your services? So go to pureseo.com or email me, richard, at pureseo.co.nz. Um, I'm pretty relaxed. I myself am non-salesy. Um, you know, if you're a really small business, happy to just have a chat with you anyway. Um, I actually wrote that book to help smaller businesses who couldn't necessarily afford us and it's very much a diy seo written for layman's and i just want to improve the whole industry like we teach for the marketing association yeah. for the university that's actually Auckland. how we first met wasn't it yeah, yeah. Cool, 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 <laughs> um, and various others so yeah by all means contact me but also if 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 you just want a um, bit of advice on my doors always open. Fantastic. So that book, um, can that be found through a pure SEO site or is there a specific site for that oh, book? Any, any of the um, online retail. So And it's called? How to Get to the Top of Google Search, A Practical Guide. Um, it's on Amazon. It's on all the, all the, know, main all platforms. the, yeah, all yep. the New Zealand thingies. Like, yeah. Awesome. That's really great. Hey, look, thank you so much for coming in and spending time with us and sharing your your views and your ideas. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time, too. Thanks, Richard.